as things go, if you fix one thing, you're bound to find something else that uh, needs to be fixed. And last week was a classic example of that where the lift started making these horrible groaning and squealing sounds when I was putting everything back up where it belonged. After I did some research, I looked into it and it sounded like it was just some basic maintenance. So I went ahead and picked up some red silicone grease and I greased up all the grease points, picked up a dedicated uh, grease gun specifically for the Benpack lift. I have another grease gun that I've had for about 20, 25 years. And uh, I was like, maybe I'm just due for a new one and I'm gonna have one just dedicated for the maintenance of the lift. It's got the pistol grip, which makes it kind of easy for the pumping. You don't have to move the big lever. You could just hold it with one hand, pump it that way. I didn't go for the most fancy one. I didn't need anything crazy. I think this one ran me about $25, $30. And then I picked up some grease for another five, six bucks. A lot of the grease points are real easy to get to. You've got multiple grease points. Everywhere you see one of these big pulleys, there's gonna be a grease zert right underneath it. And those are really easy to find. And then we're gonna also have additional grease zerks on every one of the spots next to the column where there's gonna be another pulley that's inside here. So all in total, there's gonna be eight pulleys inside of the lift. Call me silly, I like to wrap up the grease gun at the end with a bag on it so that none of the grease gets everywhere. Now I'm sure somebody else has a different way of doing it, but that's what I do. I like to take a bag, wrap it around it, tuck it away, and I don't have to worry about the grease getting out or getting a mess everywhere. The, the pistol grip, I can just hold it in one hand like this while I'm operating the other end into the grease zerk and I can just pump away as I'm just squeezing this trigger here. I don't wanna pump on it right now because I don't wanna make a mess with all the grease coming out. You just take the end of the grease gun, you got your grease cert, you push it until it clicks on. Once it's in there, I'm over here and I pump until I get to a point where I feel like it's nice and full. It's gonna be real easy to identify because you're gonna get a little bit of overflow of grease that comes out either there or right up in here, or you're gonna have a little bit that pumps out over here. As long as you're paying attention, you should see it start to bevel out just a little bit like it did right here, and then you just stop. You don't have to keep pumping until it's completely bloated and overflown. It's a waste, it's not good on the is either. One of the other things that they say for maintenance is the cables. You should be maintaining your cables as well. So what I did was I walked up and down the cables real lightly running my fingers across them, trying to see if I can find any burrs. Obviously you don't wanna have one in your finger. So I would say pay attention while you're doing that. Use your eyes. If you get any burrs, obviously that's a problem. It's not catastrophic. You wanna make sure that you're not getting too many in like a one foot range. If you have I think they said something like 10 or so in a one foot range, it's time to swap out the whole cable. Now don't quote me on that number if you wanna make sure that you're getting the right number. I suggest you look it up. You're also supposed to hydrate this cable for longevity and I'm assuming because when it's going across like say these pulleys like the double stack over here, you're most likely going to be running into problems of friction and stuff like that. They say use a product like Amsoil a-M-S-O-I-L. And there's also a weighted gear oil that you could use as well. I think it's like a 90 weight. I haven't hydrated these. I figured I'd just put some on a, on a cloth and then real lightly rub the cloth on there. They said you could brush it, you could dab it, you could pour it, all these other things. I wanna do something that's not super dirty. So I will do that. I just haven't done that yet. The piston on here is about seven feet long. If you notice, it goes way over there. Seven foot long piston. I just visually inspected it. I'm checking all the brass fittings. I'm checking over here. I'm looking at the seals, making sure nothing's blown out. Um, and then I'm just looking for visual defects. I have my lift bolted to the floor. I just feel like that's a little bit safer, especially when you're coming on and off of it. Every time you hit those ramps, you're pushing the lift just a little bit more by bolting it in. I don't have to worry about it moving or anything like that. This mine's bolted in, periodically checking the torque 
on the bolts to make sure that everything's tightened down like they should be. That is important. So you wanna make sure that things aren't getting loose from vibrations or just time or use. So I went ahead and checked all my bolts and I'm glad I did because some of them were a little bit looser than what I thought they should be. So this is Home Garage 101. I have my big breaker uh, a bar here that I have on my wrench and I can go ahead and I got my socket there. Went ahead and torque things down and I feel a lot better. I did not turn it until I was like trying to break things like cause I'm Herculean. What I was doing was making sure that things got back down to snug like they're supposed to be. I'm actually very glad that I ran into this like maintenance issue with the lift. And the reason why is because when I started greasing up all of these grease zerks, some of them seemed like as if there was barely any grease in them, which makes me serious question, again, my install. I had this, if you remember from one of my uh, earlier videos on the lift, I had it professionally installed by the Benpack uh, installation crew, experts at installing the lift. Um, and if you remember from earlier, it was less than expert. I have a feeling that while they did grease everything up, I have a feeling that they put in the bare minimum on some of them. I don't know if it was just not paying attention or just oblivious, but uh, either way, uh, with as much use as I do with this, it's mostly storage. I do some automobile maintenance and work and stuff like that, but it's not up and down, you know, 20, 30 times a day, uh, but it does get its use. Now that I know that I need to properly maintenance it, I am fully aware and I'm gonna be on top of it. But again, I feel like it wasn't properly greased from the point of installation. So what's the take home message from this? Even if you have your lift, no matter what brand it is or who does the installation, make sure that you go back and you make sure that everything is properly greased and maintenanced from get go so that you're starting on a strong foot. After I did all of the greasing up, the thing ran probably the smoothest and most quiet that it ever had before. I always had a little shudder and a little shaking, which I questioned multiple times when the installation crew had come back out, they sent out more seasoned guys to verify that the lift was put in properly, check out all the specs, make sure everything was bolted, tightened, and screwed in exactly as it needed to be. It still had that little shutter, and they said they just do that. Well, the answer is they just do that if they're not properly maintenanced, because this is now super smooth, super quiet, not one shutter, not one jiggle, not anything like that. So again, goes back down to that it's properly greased, and so therefore it's operating as if it is. Since I was gonna be doing some work on the lift, I went ahead and pulled the cars out, which just gives me a lot of room to work in the garage. And then my son, he mowed the lawn today, so we got our first mow-in of the season, looking good. Again, it gives me a lot more room to work in the garage when I have everything out. I went ahead and swept everything while I was at it, but as you can tell, it's gonna be a lot more open and just, I don't feel cramped. I don't feel like everything is just on top of me. So by having everything out, I just have a lot more room to work, which for me, I enjoy. I don't like feeling like I'm cramped between a wall or a car or another thing like that. So even if I just have one vehicle I'm working on, I like to pull them out. So smooth though. It, 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 I can barely hear it. The only thing I really hear right now is the hydraulic cylinder as it draws back in on itself. Is it just actually as it extends? As that cylinder extends out, that's pretty much the only thing I'm hearing right now. It's so quiet. Look at it, it's, it's not one little shutter, not one little vibration, nothing. All, all this time I thought it was the guide blocks that go up and down the ladder system for the locks. No, it just wasn't greased right.
Since the car is going to be parked for a little bit, we've got a, an entire week of nasty weather coming up. So I'm not going to be pulling this, the VED, or the CJ7 out. Um, I'll be pretty much just driving the Gladiator. So I'm going to go ahead and toss this on a tender, a battery tender, so that way I keep everything nice and fresh while it's parked. Let's see, positive to the positive. Actually, this might be a little bit more challenging with the hood closing on this one. I don't know how much clearance I have in there. So I'm gonna give it a little test shut to see how that works. Cause usually I have the battery out of this one when I have the tender on it. They get pretty close. I don't think it's actually on there. No, we're good. I'm just gonna leave it on uh, the runway here and then as I raise it up in the air, you can just grab it and plug it in. Oh, almost forgot my wheel blocks. Without these, I'd be in trouble. Not made in trouble, but it's a safety redundancy. I have it in first gear. I have the emergency brake on, but I also chalk both sides of the rear driver's side tire. Look at how smooth that is going. Smooth, quiet. If you remember last week, no, none of that. Only thing I hear is the hydraulic pump. Smooth. Could have put a baby to sleep on there. I always like to check it just to make sure we're clear. I remember the Corvette, I broke the windshield one time. And that's my spot. I'll go ahead and lower it down. Put everything in the locks. And it's fully released because I got loose cables. got the CJ7 on its battery tender, as well as the RX-7 and the Corvette on their battery tenders. The one that I have on the Corvette is one of my oldest battery tenders. It's got to be over 10 years old, 11, somewhere around there, somewhere around 11 years old. I'm going to go ahead and replace this one. This is the one that's been a little suspect over the last year or so. I get this like faded flickering green light that always is like that no matter how long it's plugged in and it's just the one that's suspect I, I just don't think it charges all the way or is getting a full charge so that one is going to get rotated out and a new one is going to rotate in as a lot of you may know the battery for the vet sits behind the driver's seat in these storage compartments the right is the battery tray the left is a bigger storage compartment the RX-7 is up in the air with the cable coming down this way. Woo! And right there, all plugged in. Everything's back in its place. The RX-7 in the air, the vet beneath it, the CJ-7 pulled in in the middle bay, my wife's uh, Explorer over here, and way over there, that's the Gladiator. But yeah. So anyways, everything's back tucked into its place. While everything was out, I went ahead and swept the garage too, gave it a quick cleaning. That way it's, I'm not building up all this dust from all the dirt that's on the floor. Thank you for watching today's episode of Rob's Garage, where we learn the importance of maintaining the auto lift. If we don't maintenance it, it will break itself. That would be bad. So if you need to, I suggest you maintenance yours as well. If you like today's video, hit the like button. If you have a question, leave a comment. If you just want to say something, that's a good time to leave a comment as well. Until next time, Rob's Garage.